Dimp Digital presents Idle Game Chat. Hello, Apps here from Dimp Digital. Welcome to Idle Game Chat. This is the weekly video games podcast where we give our impressions of the games that you can play today and react to the latest news from the wonderful world of video games. We are here every Monday on your favourite podcast app and YouTube absolutely free. This week I'm joined by the one time Dimp Digital Gaming Quiz Champion. It's Pac-Man himself. It's Tom Adcock. How's it going? I'm good thanks mate. Not bad. Bloody hot up in this room now I tell you. Temperatures have increased in these parts, as we were talking about offline. Two weeks ago, it was knee-deep in snow, and uh, now we're getting this. Is this, we'll get a little bit political, kick things off nice and light, is this global warming happening, or is it just crazy British weather at its best? Climate change, you know, you can't say global warming anymore. <coughs> oh, can you not? Like, and co- nah, because, you know, it gets colder sometimes. Like Russia are really cold, and they're like, well, look, it's fine, it's cold. <laughs> it's not, though, it's climate change. So Climate change. But the yeah. climate's always changing. Exactly. That's, I that's do why. remember, this is one thing I mentioned to someone, someone else offline, but I used to remember, like, bonfire night when I was a kid. So, yeah. what's that? 15, 20 years ago, probably now, before I went to one of those. Probably over that. And it used to be freezing. Like, I used to remember having chap lips. This is like November time. Chap lips, obviously, like, big, thick gloves on, scarf the lot. The last few bonfire nights, you could walk out there in a T-shirt and not be bothered. So what's yeah. going on? All this snow in February. Harder. Yeah. So my, my thing with it all is... Um... It gives too much, like, all these, den- like, climate deniers and stuff. We're giving them a lot of sort of fuel in the... Like, I remember when I was a kid, it was, like, the ozone layer. Like, there was a hole in it, and that was, like, really, like, bad. I haven't heard mention of that for a while. So <laughs> what's that that's happened there? Someone been to B&Q and sorted that out. Yeah, patched it and, up, like, mate. Air- aerosols, they were damaging the planet. They were. And now no one cares now. Link's going mental. No. So... And then also, it's always like, I see, if we don't change now, like now, it's too late. And then we don't change, and then they move the goalposts. So I'm on board, but make your mind up. Tell me what what to do. What needs doing, really? Yeah. Okay? Stop changing your minds. Yeah. People poke holes in it. Anyway, that's enough for you. The Daily Dimp political <laughs> outline. I don't, even know, I don't even know if that stuff's considered political now. Surely it's just environmental. I don't know. Everything's politics. Uh, not in my household. Um, packed show today, so for those that are or were expecting um, a Tom Adkins and not a Tom Adcock, that was initially the plan, got sort of let down on the day, so that's not always good, so drag him over the coals live on air here, but Adcock is always up for having a chat, he's got his finger on the pulse, um, he's seen some of the topics we're going to talk about. And importantly, which I think helps, he hasn't played uh, one of the mainstay impressions I'm going to give today. And I think that adds to um, just digging into exactly what the game's about and and forces me to give more details than perhaps I normally would because I'd assume that, you know, if I was talking to Adkins and he had played it, you kind of just leave things that are unsaid. Um, So we will get into the show, but patreon.com forward slash idle game chat is the place for you guys to go if you want to financially support this podcast and the wider Dimp Digital community and team. Uh, Amazon Prime, also an option if you're on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Dimp Digital. If you've got that Amazon Prime, link it up to your Twitch. You get a free Prime subscription. And at one click of a button, you can subscribe to the channel. Give us, I think it's about two quid a month. Better than nothing, isn't it? Well... I was expecting a response there, Adcox, but clearly, <laughs> clearly nothing's better to you. Two quid. Mate, I've done it. I've got some people to sign up. I told you they're into it. They're mm. loving it. They're like, well, Netflix, sort of tenner a month. I'm saying you can get dim for £2 a month. The sort of level of content yep. is, you know, it's well, miles ahead, as, as you know. Yeah, changing the game. If I said to you Outriders, what would you say back? Uh, yeah, never heard of it, mate. That's what I say. <laughs> Well, that's good. So Outriders, 
uh, released a demo this past week, which is always appreciated with games like this. Um, it is developed by the guys, and I better get this right because I've got it wrong so many times. People can fly. Um, so they've done a few projects previously. Probably the most notable ones would be Gears of War Judgment. Um, they've they helped with the the Bullet Storm full clip edition and, and other bits and pieces. But um, Square Enix are publishing this third person action RPG. Okay, so okay that hopefully paints a reasonable picture in your head. And they released a demo. It was they said there's about three hours of content in there. Adkins and I both played it. it took us five and a half hours between us, or not between us, for, for both of us. So probably a little bit more content than three hours. So there's a fair amount in there. It's basically the whole opening of the game plus like the first sort of major story chapter, I guess. Um, okay. So that's probably about six quests and three or four side quests. Um, if we choose to go off and purchase the game, our progress will carry over as well. So I always quite like that when there's like this is this is basically designed to be like a looter shooter, basically a cock. Um, okay. So gear scores, all that is all, all coming into play here. And if you're going to pump five hours into a demo they've released, I think it's always good when they they give you um, the option to carry over your progress. So that's a positive for people that are playing it or plan to play it. Another thing, cross-play out of the gate. So I played on PC to stream on the Dimp Digital Twitch channel. So that was Friday night. And Adkins was playing on Xbox Series X. And we could play together. So that's always good. Nice. Always good, good, yeah. Thing. Four classes to try out. Um, so there's a, a Devastator, a Pyromancer, which is what I chose, a Technomancer and a Trickster all have... Basically, you've got a, a close range, medium range, long range, and then the trickster's kind of like a close range, but you can kind of teleport and use time and space time to your advantage. That's a bit more of a, a slightly different class. Okay. Um, you can choose all four of these. Um, you In the opening, there's, a, there's an opening prologue, which is about an hour long, um, and you, you don't choose your, 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 your character to class until after that. Another good thing with the demo, once you've done that once, if you want to try one of the other three classes, you can just skip straight to that point with the, the new class. So you haven't got to go through the guff. Hang on, so what happens in that first bit? Can you, do you get a little taste of each one, or it just puts you in as... No. Well, oh, this, oh, go on. this is the other thing. Outriders, I was shocked at how much story was in it. Like, you know, like <laughs> Destiny and The Division and games like that, they don't typically put a great deal of time into their story. Um, and I'm not saying this is very good necessarily, but they spend a lot of time in that opening prologue setting the scene. And essentially what's happened is, it, well, we was talking about climate change earlier. It, it may well have been that, but Earth's in the shitter. So that's fucked. Everyone's who could is up, up sticks, got in the old spaceships, gone to Mars or whatever they're doing now in NASA. Musk's loving it. He's like, yep, SpaceX or whatever it is, that's up and running. So that's taking people off. But anyway, Earth's gone down the shitter and then humanity's trying to search that new that new place, which in, in this game is called Enoch. So you land on this new planet. You're one of the first people to go and land on it. Okay. And it's, it's a beautiful place, like lovely green landscapes, rolling hills, forests, lush, beautiful wildlife roaming around. And I was like, this is, this is not what I was expecting of this game because everything I'd seen up until that point looked really grimy and, and horrible and I thought wow they've really surprised me here so anyway you go for that prologue and then what happens is you've been you've been in that, that fucking cryo or whatever it's called sleep for 70 years already okay so it's taken you 70 years to get to this new Enoch planet something goes wrong on the prologue mission you have to be put back in cryo and then you wake up again but 30 years later and then you come out and the, this new planet Enoch's at war. So you kind of miss all the right. good stuff, really. Like, there's a massive war that's going on about resources. Um, the planet's in, in the shitter. And you are sort of corrupted during this prologue um, to be called like an altered. They call you an altered because you, 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 you get to 
a chance at using these new skills, these pyromancer skills, the technomancer, the devastator. So you've been touched by some, you know, scientific or, you know, UFO type fucking garbage. And that's what gives you your powers in the game. So it's oh, not yeah. just, okay. not just run and gun. You've got several powers at your disposal that you can use that are uh, of the science fiction realm. Um, so yeah, you come back out of, 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 of Cryer again, this time, 30 years later, the, the, Enoch's in the shitter, so that lovely green planet's gone, and it's and and then you, you you're off to the races really. F- suss out what's happened. You kind of meet people that you'd um, you'd landed with initially, and they give you the backstory about what happened. Standard stuff like humans just couldn't get along, something went wrong, resources become scarce, and everyone started killing each other. So that's sort of the level of story there. But that was all packed into this little demo, which I was quite surprised at. And one of the things I appreciated as a as a bit of a story man is when you go and speak to someone to get a quest, it would often bring up two or three other choices where you could ask them questions about their backstory, about what's happened, or about you know the quest at hand. So I enjoyed having that ability to kind of dig into people and find out about their stories. Because more, normally in these games, you're going at the quest, they tell you what to do, and, you, and then you're off. You're off running. So I appreciated that. But I just can't shake the feeling that... I would have preferred playing these five hours in that sort of beautiful, lush, green forest Enoch that I originally landed in. Um, and then, unfortunately, you only get about an hour of that, and then the game's sort of like... It, it's like a, <laughs> it's like Gears of War. Like, you can tell there's some some influence there from the judgment team. Like, it's a shithole, so no longer is it uplifting. But, um, yeah, so that's kind of like the setup for it. Any initial questions before I dive into gameplay and other bits and pieces yeah i mean I've, they're probably gonna lead on to that to be honest but so i'm these are not my go-to games so are i they know not? very little no but i what i know of like your um destinies division <clears throat> anthems even they're like they can be played single player but you're kind of encouraged to play multiplayer yeah so first question would be around that like and then really, I guess, what is the gameplay loop? Because you're telling me it's an action RPG, which makes me think of those aforementioned games. Yeah. But then I can't see how a Gears, like how that works into like the Gears kind of mechanic, if you know what I mean, like pure action, essentially clearing out a room, moving on. So yeah, yeah if you could, I guess, go into that a bit more, please. Yeah, so the multiplayer element's definitely there. Like it encourages you from the beginning to play with people either friends or to match make with others obviously a complete choice um and it's one of those weird games like you said the division and and destiny do this as well where you will all bundle into a room as you three like three of you and your party or whatever it is and in the cutscenes, it's only you like it, <laughs> it, it still does that weird thing which n- none of these games seem to have to get around is why is there three people suddenly disappearing into <laughs> one and they're like oh you're the only one of this type and you're like well, hang on i've got two others behind me <laughs> so there's a little bit of inconsistency there but it's designed around around multiplayer which is why i guess the cross plays there at the gate to to, to help ad- adoption rates and whatnot um and there was actually a side quest that i was doing um that i struggled with really badly like it was the final bit and the checkpoints are really good i was literally starting right outside the door it loaded nice and quick but i just couldn't beat this guy i could not i could not kill him um all these little minions would respawn after half health and they would give me problems then he would fire out this bloody flame tornado that'd follow you around and i just kept dying i was being pretty poor sometimes but other times i felt this was too hard um and then i moved it down a level um just to get that done, went back with Adkins later on, on two levels up, so I'd sort of gone up another level by then, and we pissed him, we literally cut his cock off and taught him a lesson, (laughs) so I feel like some parts of the game are designed around a co-op element, just for that reason, and there was another quest in the game where I was thinking, if he was just focusing on me, this would be really hard. But just having one other person for the enemies to focus on is a massive help because you die really quickly. Like your health is just melts away if you're stood out of cover getting getting shot and whatnot. Um, and then coming on to the mechanics, how does a Gears game kind of... It's a cover shooter, really. So it, it doesn't feel... I think this is where people might 
misunderstand when I say gears. It, it, the the world feels like gears in like it's a shit hole, and you yeah. you go into cover. You have like big machine guns and whatnot. But this feels you feel a lot lighter in this. You know, a lot more flimsy. I would say. Yeah. Uh, a lot more nimble in some cases because at, at certain points it's clear that Outriders wants you to kind of be on the move and be aggressive. Um, because the only way that you can heal, or the primary way you can heal, is by killing enemies. And depending on what class you choose, like the, I chose the, the Pyromancer, to heal, I had to inflict them with like my fire ability and then kill them whilst I was inflicted with that particular element, and then I'd get healed oh, from yeah. it. And okay. the other ones work slightly differently. So it it has the gears kind of feel to it but at the same time you've got these weird powers that you never had in gears um that you could chuck out there and, and that you use using lb rb and, and a combination of those two put together but it does feel flimsy and the one thing about particular gears games is the cover system is like your safety net that's like your, your blanket it felt it felt a bit inconsistent here in outriders so there were times when I would, I felt like I was should be going to cover, and I either wasn't going immediately or wasn't going at all, and that was a real irritant. If I'm honest, I hate it when you kind of yeah. get stuck, and because your health's melting away, there's a bit of frustration there. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where we're at in terms of the game itself. I mean, the the powers that I had, one was like a just like a direct flame that would just go in a straight line. Anyone in that path would be would start to set on fire and from there I could shoot them with added damage and hopefully kill them to heal. So that's one kind of power I had. Second one was a simple power where you kind of just grab and take off a quarter, a quarter of the health of the enemy. So it would just be a fireball that would come out, pull back and it would take off a chunk. Wouldn't, wouldn't leave like a lasting impact. And the third power, which was the RB, that was a cool one. It would be similar to the flame one. Like you'd, you'd, you'd fire it out. It would only hit one person yeah. And then if you killed them whilst they were inflicted with that power, so you've got about five seconds or so to get rid of them, they would then rise up in the air slightly and explode and then kill any other enemies around them. So that's nice. that was okay. really nice for like groups of enemies behind cover that you couldn't that were difficult to get to. So I had some fun messing around with that. Unfortunately, both of us chose the same class. Like we weren't really we didn't know if we were going to play together, and unbelievably, we were both drawn to the the pyromancer, but. It was it was fun. It was fun, but nothing, no no kind of like wow moments. I'd say from the game itself. I was I was pleasantly surprised when I first started it, as it as I started falling into like the the loop of the game, which is you know quest go to go from A to B, kill everything on your way, kill something, get get some gear at the end. It kind of felt a lot more familiar. I was a bit like this is not as you know it's not as interesting as I first thought it was. But are you, yeah, are you. I still can't get my head around. Are you like in a hub world, getting your quest and going out into the real world, like sort yeah. of Monster Hunter? You are okay. Yeah. Right. And the area that they put us in, like they they open for the demo, is the open area. Okay. Wasn't you don't? It's not really like an open well. Like it's not. It's not like the division where there's a city to explore. Like there was a level for us to explore, but it was really quite small corridors into rooms, for example. Okay. Um, like there'd be like maybe like one big square place where there might be. A battle going on that you could get involved with but other than that all the all the quests were directed towards rooms that was that, that were on the map um that you go for a few corridors kill some stuff on the way land at the sort of the end room kill the boss take the gear back put on the new stuff dismantle the old stuff buy some new stuff if you've got some options there and recycle that process um they did mention at the end of the demo, it's kind of like, oh, we're going to go to the, I think it's the front lines they were calling it. And they that made it sound like there was um, it, perhaps a bigger world to be, you know, experiencing. Yeah, but yeah. We ain't seen it. So I don't know if that's the case, whether you'll get past this first sort of chapter and then it will open up and there'll be a big open world to explore. I don't know. But from what we... Might even be back to the uh, the Pandora beauty of the world if it's the front lines where they haven't fucked it all up Mate. yet, perhaps. Who knows? It could be, yeah. And that would be we great. I doubt it if it's all like in rooms and stuff. But yeah, you don't know. Well, I'll say in rooms. They, they weren't, but they were... It was... On the map, mean, yeah. it looked like a little room. Like, it was all just yeah. like narrow corridor, open field, fight, back you go. Um... So yeah, that was. I don't know what what, what 
what the front lines holds or whatever it's called but it it felt by the end of the demo by the end of the five and a half hours that the interesting stuff had kind of gone and it fell into that that stage where i could see myself giving it a go but nowhere near my sitting there going cool wait for that to bloody come out and play that day one like i don't think that the, the demo has done enough for me um which is a shame but that's the you know how things go sometimes you don't always resonate how with. far out are we from this game coming out uh, april the 1st it'll be releasing okay so. so right fair enough and then is it on everything it's on playstation as well mm. Everything except for Switch, including Stadia, so that's still going. Fucking hell. All right. So Switch really got to pull the... F- I don't think it'll run this. Like, it doesn't run nah, anything. No, no, no. But, yeah, I think at the end of the day, it's one of those games that will require... You'd want to play it in a team of, like, you, the, the maximum number of people you can have in your squad is three. I was just going to ask that. Okay, fair enough, yeah. So that, that, in some circles, is a bit of a killer because most games are four. But this is free, so... But also, it's a fucking pain in the ass getting people to play regular. Yeah, like, right? I feel like if, you, if this is your thing, then, yeah, like, the lower numbers could be a, a positive to get yeah. it going. Well, as we found out, we can't even get people to do a podcast once a week. So, <laughs> I mean, what are we doing here? Um, I think I, I I spoke to Sir Dave about this after I had a little go of it. And... He he raised a really good point. Like he hadn't played it, but he'd seen a lot of it. And one of his mates, uh, Chris, had given some impressions. And he said, "To be honest, I've got Destiny. I've got all these other games I want to play. Do do I need another game like this in my life? Yeah. Like another another game that's asking for you know meeting up with others, with managing your gear, upgrading, going for that cycle, perhaps grinding a little bit. And it's like probably not. You you don't really want." If you've got one of those games already, you don't need two. You it's very true. And you, you probably wouldn't even want the game to start with. I, can't, I just cannot see a Pac-Man Adcock sitting there playing one of these games and getting the most out of it. No, it ain't going to happen, mate. They're not for me. And, I mean, this one sounds kind of middle of the road. It doesn't sound like, you know, five and a half hours is a fair chunk of change to give you, which is good. But also, if they're not selling it to you on that, then what else is that offering yeah. is my question. So you'll never get into one of these games, these either service type games or gear no, shooter just types. Fucking, no, just I just to be honest, I, I don't know. It, maybe like for the social aspect, you know, for like a bunch of mates would meet up once a week and twice a week and just play. Then almost like the game would be secondary, yeah, potentially. But no, nah, they're just not my. I, I prefer an A to B thing. I don't want to waste three hundred hours on a grinder font to get a fucking rare gun to drop. So. <laughs> Well, I don't. It's just not for me. You, like, you used to love the Gears campaigns, playing those with with two others I did. Or, or one other. Yeah, campaign was always alright. And then yeah, we used to fuck around online for ages. Like we had a good group then, like ten of us. So you'd have all four, or eight of us, or whatever, in a four v four. And yeah, we'd play a bunch. Yeah. But unfortunately, mate, they've grown up now, and it's just sort of left me, baby Tom, sitting here doing nothing. So yeah, <laughs> I don't know where that's coming from now. Uh, well, that's Outriders. Um, Oh, the only other thing to mention is I mentioned the difficulty level just slightly. I turned it down to kill that little prick. Um, it's, it's quite interesting the way they do the, the, dif- the, the difficulty level. It's actually called a world tier. So Go on. each time you move... So you start on world tier one, and that has... My, it says like minus two enemy health, minus two something else, blah, blah, blah. Uh, loot drops common to rare only. And it'll give you like okay. a little overlay. Then you've got World Tier 2, which is minus one enemy health, um, rare to legendary drops, blah, 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 blah. And there's loads of other multipliers on there. So the way the game works is that you unlock these World Tiers as you play. And the higher the World Tier, the harder the game is. So increased okay. health for enemies, uh, increased damage for you. But they increase the rewards with that. So okay. All Fair like enough. I'm assuming all the rare hard shit you can only get in like the top few level world tiers. So for the people that really put the time in and are good at this, they'll be putting it on world tier 15 when they unlock it, um, and it'll be rock hard. But they'll be reaping the rewards. So I thought that's quite a little interesting way of doing the difficulty. And, and for a game like this where you kind of do get better as uh, the more you invest into it, that's a way of keeping it kind of increasing and scaling to your level. 
and your gear as well, because it means that yeah. you know as you get more powerful gear, they haven't got to adjust the enemies necessarily. They've just got to adjust the damage you're putting on them and how much they can take um, with, with your gear score. And it's also if you put it on easy, once you're at a certain level, all the stuff you get back from that's not going to be a decent level. So it's a fool's errand. Um, so that's that. That's Outriders, I think. Fair enough. Not bad. You will you well. It doesn't sound like you'll be picking this up, but. Nah. Maybe a little Steam purchase six months from release. You know, it would have to be, uh, yeah, at a discount. Um, and to be honest, I'm kind of like Monster Hunter is kind of like the grindy game I'm playing at the moment. That needs to be seen off before anything like this is started up. So he's up against it because Monster Hunter is a big game. Well, and the new one's out soon as well, so... Ah, well, announced for PC next year as well. I saw that, yeah. Oh, you said, didn't you? That's that's now the preferred method. Well, if, Mate, if it's anything but it's, Switch, really, isn't it? It's right. designed with Switch in mind, though. Pick up and play. You're going to be getting a sort of the wrong, wrong like, play yeah, style on that PC. You've got to go for that voice chat. Right. I mean, yeah, it's got our voice. Surely it's got to have no, voice No, they're going to make you use no. that app. I've only played once. It was the one for 3DS. Well, one on... No. Well, yeah, I did have that one, actually. But I had one on the Wii. As... I think it was the Wii. And I basically remember we had to have like a group chat like, on our phones to talk to each other. It was a fucking disaster, <laughs> it was. It's a hard game as well. You need to coordinate that. It's fucking hard, yeah. Yeah. But there you go. Right. Fresh off the heels of the Nintendo Direct from last week, PlayStation and Sony put together a state of play. Half an hour this one, so 20 minutes shaved off what we had for Nintendo. Um, We're not going to go blow by blow through this because it'll just be too much. But anything that you... First of all, what's the overall thoughts of this state of play? I mean, you tuned in for Nintendo last week. I'm assuming you were as disappointed as everyone else with 50 minutes of lives being flushed. They asked for less time here, but did they provide enough to, to keep you interested and keep you looking for something over the, over the next course of the, the, the few months with Sony and, and co? Because you ain't got the PS5 anymore either, so that's another... They've got to resell you on that, urgently. I was nervous about that, I'm not going to lie. I don't normally watch these things either, to be honest. I've watched two back-to-back now, and... Yeah, the Nintendo one was a real fucking kick in the balls. So I was like, right, what's PlayStation offering? And I was, I was worried, because as, as I sort of tuned in, I heard these were all going to be games that were coming out this year, and I was like, right, have I made a massive error? And it was significantly better than what uh, Nintendo showed. Um, mm. But I'll be honest, there was nothing there. There's definitely, well, right, there's a couple I'll be sniffing around, yeah. but they weren't like in the Tom Wheelhouse of games, if you know what I mean. There was yeah. nothing that was like, uh, um, right, you know, core. Cool. I didn't know that was coming, and now I'm really fucking annoyed I've sold it. But yeah, yeah that's, that's basically where it was. Cause I hadn't, I mean, I'm useless. What's the night at the one where everyone sort of lost their shit over? <laughs> Those teddy bears. Like oh, Five thing. Nights at Freddy's. Five Nights at Freddy's, yeah. I sort of like, I'd half heard of it. But I was like, what is that? And then sort of, I was like, right. Know, you know, that's, that's a big one. And then the Final Fantasy at the end, I was like, again, it's like, well, maybe this is the chance for me to actually fight. Because I did think about that on PS4, to be honest. Right. So um, uh, maybe now, yeah, I will jump in. It's, it's getting a pull over to PS5. But yeah, I don't know. What about you? Yeah, I think the it, it is saved because I had to sit through 50 minutes last week. That half hour felt like a treat. It felt like I was being given 20 minutes of life back. But very much in your camp, not really a great deal there. I mean, we had Crash Bandicoot 4 coming to PS5. It's like, okay, fine. Um, one of the, the first party games that was showcased, and we've seen it a few times, was but it was Returnal. That's coming oh, April yeah. 30th. Housemark games so what do you think of that i forgot about that yeah i don't know well i do know i know exactly what i know it it ain't 70 quid game and that's what these sony first parties are oh, this yeah. is a 70 pound yeah. game and this is a bit uh this feels a bit harsh but it's, be- it's because the game doesn't look like a proper it don't look like demon souls no it don't like the last of us it don't look like miles morales it don't look like ghosts of tsushima and these, no, 
and if you're it looks then like a Game Pass game, doesn't it? Is what I would say. It yeah, it does. It does, and that's the biggest thing about it is that Housemark typically have been putting in budget titles. Um, uh, oh, I can't remember the bloody name of that really famous one that everyone loves. Um, but the the games that they've been putting out, you know, in 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 history have been budget games, not selling at full price. Um, and now we're being asked to Rezo Gun. That's the one. So now we're being asked to shell out not just full price of what we knew last generation, which is about sixty quid, and you would find the deals and find it for fifty quid usually. But this will start at seventy pounds because Sony have hiked up all their first party stuff to another tenner, ten more dollars in the US, ten more pounds over here, and I guess ten more euros for mainlanders and ireland but that's the thing that's putting me off the most it's like I, at no point have i sat there and seen what this game's offering and thought yep yeah, that's that's a big uncharted naughty dog level game that's worth looking at for 70 pound this doesn't just does not i don't get that from it so far no i agree yeah i had little glimpses of like that triple a but not really it really yeah. gave me um What's that Tom Cruise film? Live, die, repeat. Edge of those, tomorrow. Yeah, like the aliens reminded me of that a lot. Actually, yeah. one of the, and also the name of the game. What is that? Yeah. Well, also, so the like, premise, isn't it? Like you, she comes back each time, and it's a loop. Yeah, I kind of got that, but I was, again, it didn't really. Do you know what I didn't like on this uh, state of play? Yeah. Just like letting the devs like do the sort of voiceover. I was like, I don't. <laughs> didn't, I was like, just sell it as a trailer. Like, just give me that sort of three minutes, like overall rather than them just sort of rattling on telling me about the adventure i didn't like it <laughs> i don't know if that's what they do all the time i was like get the get him off they do a bit of they do a bit of a bit of both i think um but yeah that's sort of like one of the big ps5 exclusives coming and i was a bit like yeah not really is that ps5 only thing because a lot of these were cross-gen weren't they yeah but i think that one is i haven't seen it listed for ps4 yet um nothing on that shows me that it couldn't run on that but yeah, 70 quid's a lot for a game. And Housemark, as good as they have been with their, their, their previous games, they haven't done anything on that level. It's not The Last of Us. It's, if, it was, if it was a Naughty Dog game, I probably wouldn't even question it. But it ain't. So that's going to have to wait <laughs> for a sale and reviews, possibly. So <clears throat> that's... I said the other one I did like mm -hmm. um, was that... Um... Hang on, let me just Google it quick. Say something interesting. Oh, there it is. Uh, Kena, Bridge of Spirits. Yes. Yeah. I thought that looked decent, actually. That was up in my wheelhouse a bit. Yeah, that looks interesting. That's on PS4 as well. So um, for those, I think it will come to PC or is coming to PC. But that's that's lurking. Um, I think it's what they give the release date, August 24th? Yeah, yeah 2021. Right. So later this year... So not getting it till much later. It, you you will hopefully, I guess, for your perspective, have a PS5 by then because you'll want to be playing that Resident Evil 8 where possible on a that's the dream, yeah, top machine. But yeah, that's um, hmm. When I first saw it, I liked the look of it. I I kind of didn't really know what I was looking at this at the, <laughs> for this bit of the reveal. Um, yeah, I'm not sure about that one. In all honesty. I think it's got a chance, but I've just got a feeling it, it looks... It's obviously resonating with certain people because you're not the only person to say that. But I just think ultimately what will come out the back of it will be a bit of a blower, in all honesty. Yeah, I've, I kind of, in a way, kind of these all felt like sort of... like Well, as you said before, like none of them are AAA. They're all sort of that lower tier game, basically. Mm. Could be a bit of a worry. They're none of them, not one of them, well, apart from Final Fantasy, I guess, at the end, but yeah. leave that on its own. Yeah, um, and Oddworld as well. Obviously, you heard of that. Never played an Oddworld. Is it Oddworld? Yeah, Oddworld Soulstorm. That yeah. looked nice, to be fair. Like that, that did look like. Was that cross gen as well? Mm. 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 You know, I don't know. This is half the problem. They don't make things clear, do they? Oh, it is. Yeah, it arrives on PS4 and five, six, there and eight. So it is. But I'm guessing we were looking at the. P Actually, do you know what? It's the other thing I know is a couple of these games said they're running on a PC. Yeah, I know. Like, What's I that know. Shit? That's cheeky, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> But it looked nice. I don't know if this was one of them, but I was like, it did look nice. But I don't. It's like I mean, I've never 
never played these and I got the vibes like sort of almost like lemon sort of game like you yeah like, it wasn't what I thought it was to be honest but again not really for me but I mean I'm guessing if you're a fan of this sort of these games then it's nice that it's coming out yeah it's not there are it's an old series odd world I remember, I remember I had a demo I think it was of Abe's Odyssey and I play that about 100 times over just that demo piece and yeah again not gonna it's there, which is fine as filler, but I, you know, it's not going to get me going. Um, saw Deathloop again. Which oh yeah. Looks. Is that like the Overwatch sort of one? Well, it's that one where it's like you're an assassin with. It looks like really stylized and cool ways of killing people, first person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then you die. It's again, it's another loop game. I think this is. They need to split these Returnals and Death Loops up, keep them out of the same same sort of conference but that looks okay it looks like something i'll enjoy the big thing for me is that's a that's a sony exclusive like a timed exclusive so we're coming to xbox um arcane who develop it are owned by bethesda oh, who are yeah, now yeah, going to be owned yeah, yeah. by microsoft so in a year's time you would one would assume that Deathloop will arrive on on Microsoft systems and on Game Pass. So at this point, I'm like, unless it's coming out the gate swinging and is being spoken of as like the game of the century, the game of the year, Deathloop's going to go on the back burner until it comes to Microsoft platforms and then it'll go on Game Pass, presumably. Yeah. And I'll be, I'll be playing that. Um, the only other game I kind of wanted to touch on was... The martial arts type game called Sifu, I think it's Sifu, S I F U. Um, do you do you remember this? Like it is a, a guy walking through a corridor, and you were just like martial arts sort of attacking oh, people. Oh yeah, it's like studio Japan sort of vibes. That's it. Yeah, I, I think that one did say yeah. on PC as well. That was one of the <laughs> one of the games that was either running on PC or part of it was. But that looked like it could be interesting. I mean, I'm not saying. It's a bit you don't really know much too much about it, but that was mm. that kind of. It was a bit like that, um, up. like fighting close, like in corridors, like that's um, it. That movie, The Raid. Yeah, I mm. remember that one. Yeah, it did look decent actually. You're right. Good concept. Surprised it hasn't been done before when I saw it. No, exactly. Yeah. And then, really, I don't know if there's anything else before we get into Final Fantasy, but Solar Ash, hit or miss, Knockout City, which I think I saw at the Nintendo Direct. I'm sure it was on there, or something similar, like a dodgeball game. Um, and then really, they they saved the they saved the best announcement to last. Final Fantasy VII remake. They're doing a remastered version of it uh, called Integrade. That will be available June tenth this year. Uh, I mean, and what are we getting here? Is that a new character that was getting shown at the beginning, or is it a new storyline? New, new story, to... yeah. Okay. Um, so for that character, so it's like a like an expansion or a side kind of thing. Yeah, because obviously this has to. It's got a story to tell that's already been told. So I'm, yeah, just like a little bit of side action. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, obviously enhanced. Well, not obviously, but they're doing enhanced visuals and, and and other bits and pieces with it. But really, that was it, and we were left to walk away with with no mention of God of War. Which I think at this point everyone's given up hope of coming this year. Um, Ratchet and Clank, no extra footage. I, I assume since they announced the release date, we'd see a bit more from that, but not to be. And uh, I was hoping that we would get something like the Last of Us 2 PS5 patch announced or shown here. And that hasn't it's happened. happened, isn't it? It's yeah, they've done God of War now. Like, it seems like they're going back and at least unlocking the frame rates on them so they can run at 60, which is, makes a huge difference to a lot of these games. But we didn't get that. There is some controversy with Final Fantasy VII Remake, believe it or not. Go on. Following day, Sony announced the games for PS Plus in March. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. One of those games is Final Fantasy VII Remake, which is great. That's less than a year old. Like... In terms of like an anticipated remake, one of the top ones, like people fucking love Resident, uh, Resident they do love Resident Evil, but they love Final Fantasy VII, um, and the remake was always something people dreamed of, and we got part one 
last year. So that's coming to Pierce Plus, and you think, well, that's great. But what they've decided to do is if you bought Final Fantasy VII on your PS4 or you buy it, you'll get a free upgrade if you've got a PS5. So all this new stuff that they offered on Integrade, so the visuals, the photo mode, all that stuff, which is good. That's the way you should do it. Like If you've got the game and they're patching it and, and adding bits, okay, we don't pay anything. That gets That's a free upgrade. If you only have the PS Plus version that goes live in March, you can't do that. So they've deliberately gone out of their way to block <laughs> that upgrade path if you get it on PS Plus. So, for example, I'm going to claim it because I claim every game on PS Plus. If I want to play the PS5 version on my PS5 of the enhanced visuals, I will have to buy this integrate game. Adkins, on the other hand, he's already got Final Fantasy VII on his PS4. He will be able to drop the disc in on his PS5 June 10th and play the new one, with, which is free. I mean, I don't know how I feel about that. It feels like it should have been an easy win. Like, this should have been good news, shouldn't it? Final Fantasy VII, freebie, PlayStation Plus. But between them, they couldn't... They just had to just score a bit of an own goal by blocking off an upgrade path. They've gone out of their way to make that restriction as well. That's the, that's the killer. Yeah. I mean, yeah, because it's, it's... You can't say it's bad timing because it's like in-house decision, so... It's the, it was the next day, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what they're thinking there, but I mean, you are... I mean, to be honest... I don't know how much it would bother me, really. You're getting the, It's your choice, I guess. You can either get the game for free or... Yeah, it's in and play the, the previous gen version. Or, yeah. I, mean, I guess you could buy it used now, couldn't you? The PS4 version and then get the free upgrade. That's what I was thinking. Like, could you get, could I borrow it off Adkins, put Let's it in why not. PS4 or PS5, claim it on my account that way, then download, like, then claim it on PS Plus, and then will it think and recognize nah. that I've got the. So I don't I know know. But you know what I mean? Like that's such a weird blocker to put. It in. is weird. Yeah. I kind of get it because you don't want people just to never buy the PS5 version. But at the same time, like I mean, to be fair, it would have been easy if, they, as you say, they've actually done it on purpose. Yeah. Is to on purpose just do like a seventeen ninety nine download, and there you get the upgraded version if you've downloaded the free one from. Yeah, and I uh, that would be. I mean, again, not great, but that would be more understandable because it's just a patch at the end of the day. Yeah, it's going in. So absolutely, that would have been the way to do it. And some people have said, "Well, <clears throat> don't blame don't blame Sony for this. This is, the, this is Square or whatever it is being greedy." But I'm like, oh, "Hang on a minute! It's on their platform. They've brokered this deal with them. Like, they could have they could have said, no, we want to have the rights that anyone who downloads that gets the upgrade as well.' But they they didn't want to pony up. So what should have been a an easy win and a great moment has got a bit of an own goal attached to it. Um, it yeah, it's weird, because as you say, it's not even an old game. When did it get released? Like, this time last year? Like, March, April, yeah. Yeah, just switch it round. Like, you know, I guess they plan these games out a while in advance. Make this, like, when's, when's the upgrade coming? Yeah, June, so... June. So then make this your, like, November <clears throat> game or your December game or whatever and give it away then. I don't know, like, do you know what I mean? Like, Yeah. Put the upgrade out there first, get all the money, then go, oh... By the way, it's now free on PS Plus. Yeah, because as you say, this game's like really revered. I'd say like most people who wanted to play it would have already played it by yeah. now. So it's yeah. a funny one that. So then you're not making much money off of them, but then like Pac-Man sitting at home, yeah, is probably not you know going to go out. You know, if I can fiddle it and get it, not sexually, if I can do it, um, <laughs> you know, and get it like you say the Adkins way, maybe borrow it and get it cheaper. I'd probably do it. I'd get that version then. I'd be like, right, I want to see this game looking its best. Yeah. Get that extra content, but not you know. It's just, yeah, it's a weird one. Yeah. Well, anyway, <clears throat> that was the Sony State of Play plus the little announcement for um, PlayStation Plus. I mean, you know, it, it, on one hand, you can't grumble at a game less than a year old. If you got, if you just got a PS4 and you haven't got a PS5, like a lot of people haven't got PS5, you can't fucking get one. Um, so if you still got your PS4 and you didn't get Final Fantasy VII. You're laughing, like you are literally going to get that in a few days' time, or today, or it'll be Tuesday actually. 
Um, Tuesday is when they, they drop that, and you can play Final Fantasy VII first time round if you've got a PlayStation Plus. Can't grumble. If you've got a PS5, though, you've got a bit more of a... Just got a bit of a sour taste in your mouth, that's all. Because you know there's a better version coming to your platform that you're going to have to, it seems to, buy you know, outright. But we'll see. I'm undecided what to do, because I did want to play Final Fantasy VII. Um, I was going to borrow it off Adkins, but now I'm not sure. I want to play Final Fantasy XV first, so that's, I shouldn't even be thinking about that. Friday, we've got a Pokemon showcase. So, a little celebration, blah, blah, blah. The two headlines that come out of it, we've got Pokemon Diamond and Pearl being remade and released on Switch, coming later this year. So, that could be um, a sought-after game for the, the Fantasy Gaming League. Transfer windows open as we speak, so people may have already scrambled to secure that. Check Twitter for the updates. Um, and then they released some footage on a new... It's in a new era of Pokemon, and it's called Pokemon Legends Arceus. Okay, I can't pronounce that shit at the end, but Pokemon Legends. Um, and this looked like it was going open world, like full open world. And Sword and Shield kind of dabbled with it. I think I was ex I was expecting Sword and Shield to be like, oh, we've got this console now that plays Zelda, for example, Breath of the Wild. Pokemon's got to go that route, and they didn't. Um, so it makes me wonder whether it was a 3DS game to start with and was moved over. This Pokemon Legends looks like it's going to be in the same vein as a as a as a Zelda type Breath of the Wild. It looked very much like Breath of the Wild. The only negative thing really to say about it was it, it ran like donkey shit. Like even in the trailer, <laughs> like frame rate awful. I know it's early; it's not due till next year, but. Jesus Christ, you must be able to cobble something. Why don't you just do what Sony did and say that it's on a PC for now? Just make it look a bit more smoother. But um, I know you're not a Pokemon guy. You'd, had you ever played any of the old ones, like even on the Game Boy? Surely, surely one of them. No. Bloody hell. No, I missed them all. Didn't even play Pokemon Go when it came out. Just. Yeah, I can understand that. No, everyone played that though, didn't they? Nana, Nana, Rigby was was walking around the park, but no, I just never really. I don't know why. Never, you know, been bothered by him. Yeah. Does a no. full open world 3D Pokemon game change any of that, or is it still? I don't like Pokemon. Doesn't matter what you do. It can be, it can be labelled as Breath of the Wild two for all I care. Pokemon ain't gonna get me through the door. Um, no, I'm I'm always winnable. Like you can win me over with it, but I just I I don't kind of yeah I don't know because like at the end of the day it's still the same thing, right? Find a Pokemon, catch a Pokemon, go to fight someone at a gym. Like it's turn based. It's never mm. been my jam that old turn base. So well, you can like sneak up on the Pokemon in this this Legends game. Like yeah. you can sneak up in the grass, throw a Pokeball, get them that way. Yeah, but. It's just there's no there's no, nothing else is there. There's no you're not gonna have the puzzles, you're not gonna have the sort of you know, finding little villages and stuff, are you? Is it I don't know, well they could do. They could drop a load of shrines in there for you if that'll make you happier. That would make me happier, Joe. <laughs> give me those shrines, give me something, give me that physics based action. And at the oh, end you Lord. unlock a new Pokemon, like a captured one. Yeah, I'll take that. I mean, I'm excited for people who are excited about these games because, you know, he's exciting into it. I, I know, you know. Pokemon's a big deal. Is yeah. it, and sorry, are they, because they always release two, right? So is there two of these coming out? Yeah, I don't know, actually. They didn't mention that. You're right. They they always release two. Um, don't know. I actually don't know. Because if it is, you know, it's a chuggy mess at the moment with those Breath of the Wild like, engine running, then that's, that's a lot of game to make. That is. Was this known? Were they talking about it? Is this come out of the blue? Because I, I literally know nothing. So is this, is this blowing people's minds or people knew it was coming? Rumour in innuendo it was. Right. So not officially announced as far as I know. I didn't certainly know about it. I I suspected there was a new Pokemon game in, in production. I exp You know, Diamond and Pearl I never played. I only played Red and a bit of Yellow. It fell off after that. I would love a remake of Red or Blue or Green or Yellow. What, um, what did they come out on? What's that? Oh, 2000, what are they, 2006? So 
Is that, that a DS or something? Is that or? DS start? Yeah, it must have been. Right. Um, oh, okay. I'm like you. Like, I've only played one of them properly when I was a kid and always wanted to go back, but never had a Nintendo DS, so that was not an option. Never had a 3DS, that's not an option. Only when the Switch arrived did I think, oh, I'll get Pokemon Sword and Shield. This is going to be like a big upgrade. And it wasn't, so I left it. Um, but if they did a remake, a proper remake of red, green, blue, or yellow, I would go back and play that. And I know what people are saying. They're saying, oh, we've already had that. Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu or whatever it was, and Let's Go Eevee. And I was like, no, 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 no. Because that wasn't Pokemon. You were just tossing balls at their head and feeding them fruit. Like you weren't <laughs> fighting them to capture them. That is not... They bastardised the originals by doing it that way. I want the original remade in the same vein as they've done with Pearl and Diamond, where they ain't fiddling with stuff. They ain't fiddling over the law. But that's not going to happen, because we've got Let's Go fucking Eevee and that other prick. So Pokemon Legends is marks a... It looks like, and again, we will never know until the game comes out, an intended kind of departure from the formula and maybe listening to what people have been saying, like we want this this great franchise. It's, it's, it is beloved and revered across, you know, people and especially the Nintendo fans, but we want a, a full-blown open world style, not what you've been given us as of late. And this looks like it's going to be that. I withhold judgment because we, you never know. It could be like a five-hour spin-off. Who knows? <laughs> I imagine that. It's just a great plateau, but in Pokemon form, like you get off Pokemon that. Pokemon like, Bowser's Fury. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, it's, it looks like they're doing the thing that people are asking for. Still got major concerns about the Switch hardware because... It, it was chugging, but that could just be old code or, or whatever. Hey, Switch Pro inbound, <clears throat> finally. Here we go. I need to... Uh, I want that. I don't I just... It would seem stupid to buy one because I've not played the normal Switch for so long, but I feel like I need something like that to get me back into it. Hardware of a vision. It's probably going to be a waste of money for me, but that's what happens in life. So, Seeing never 4K tablets, loving it. That's it. They, they will not be. Imagine that 4K Nintendo. That will never happen, will it? <laughs> that will never bloody happen. Well, that's it from me. So, unless there's anything else on Pokemon or any other bits and pieces you wanted from State of Play or Outriders. Not really. They just Nintendo do baffle me. You know, it's like uh, you got the console now. It's got two Splatoon games, two Pokemon games, but yeah, where's your Metroid? And you've no. got its own Smero cart, yeah? It's still got all those Wii U games still porting across. Where's the Metroid there's Prime there, Trilogy? There we I always, I said this to someone recently, I was like, I thought once they got rid of like the 3DS and stuff, yeah. and you know, you've got all those teams now dedicated to one sort of console, you'd expect their output to be that much greater, but it doesn't feel like it, and it's still... You know, the games they choose to make, they just don't listen to anyone. They do whatever the fuck they want. <laughs> it's strange. I mean, no, this is listening to people, bizarrely, and I see us even weirder. So. Well, the thing is, I I don't know the exact relationship between Nintendo and, like, the Pokemon group, but... but yeah, it's his own deal, isn't it? <laughs> it is, but I think the Nintendo owns... There's some... There's obviously an agreement or something in place, because otherwise the Pokemon group would be fools not to... Ask Game Freak to develop a game for PS5, PC, yeah, Xbox, and just make untold, you know, amounts of money. So I can't remember what the exact relationship is, but Nintendo are lucky that they've got them in their pocket because they don't half bring some fucking money in with all the stuff that they they release on their consoles. And yeah, it always it always seems a bit crazy this that you've got that relationship in place and. You know, it's not gonna it's not gonna land on a PC. Imagine like a full blown PC version of of a Pokemon game. People would be losing their shit, but Yeah. Not gonna happen, I'm afraid. Well, let's close this down then. No point dragging it out any longer. Thanks to you guys if you uh, got to the end of this and are still listening or watching on YouTube. Like we know there's a a crowd who prefer that, so thank you for that. Uh, we'll be back next monday hopefully mr adkins will uh, sort his schedule out and be here if not 
got Adcock, got Hall, got Paper, got all sorts of people that can come in. Loads of stuff for people to talk about. Loads of games being played, all different ones. So we will get back to some hardcore gaming impressions for the for the full podcast. I've got Return of the Obra Dinn to be talking about. Adcock, Pac-Man, he's got Mario Maker 2 that he's loving. He's got the medium that he played and may have been off or may not have been off. He'll have to find <laughs> out and tune in in a future episode. One thing I do know, though, is the Fantasy Gaming League transfer window is open. So, huge opportunity for everyone involved. Oh, better let, let them know. Chappers no longer captain of Weather Waxes Warriors. He has um, stepped down from that and the entire DIMP team. So, Adcock, Hall and Paper are running it themselves against Biff. So... It's going to be interesting with no kind of leader to to lay down the law and and make the chart make the choices. Um, yeah, so Chappers is not not part of that anymore, and he's not part of the the wider sort of dimp team. So we wish him well on his future endeavours. Um, Biff, if he loses to this Weather Waxes Warriors Democracy team, he will vacate the championship next year, so it'll be vacant, and then the top two people from the Grand Prix will battle it out. So that's how that's going to work. If Biff wins, obviously he'll just defend it next year. But Adcock, you're part of this this new venture, this new freeway, equal input, decision making team. Paper and Hall, not the best of friends, don't seem to get on. You're kind of stuck in the middle of these two maniacs. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 a democracy at the moment, but you've got the tyrant paper sort of <laughs> Yeah, sort of underhandedly trying to win back power, I feel. So uh see what happens there. Uh. Yeah. Well, the transfer window is open. Check Twitter, Twitter account at Dimp Digital for any of the transfers that are going through and that people are requesting. Quite a few announcements that have come out that are going to get people stirred up and games been delayed and whatnot. So it's always worthwhile checking our socials to see how that is going. But that's it now. Nothing more for us to say apart from thanks for your time and ta-da. This was a Dimp Digital production.